Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics, which is the markup language that we'll be using to make the individual components of our visualizations. So I'm going to get started by creating a new component. Components in Svelte are just files that have the Svelte extension. So I'm going to just do new. I'm going to call this one 01 SVG because this is lesson one. And then I'm just going to go in and substitute out the component that gets loaded here when we go to our app. So I'm going to save that. This is red right now because the linter doesn't like that there's no script tag, so I'm just going to add that. Technically not required for a Svelte component, but the linter likes it, so I'm going to make it happy. I'm going to pull up my terminal again and run yarn dev. And it's going to give me this link to open up. Now this is a blank page because there's nothing in the component. But if I type something in the component, it shows up. So I'm going to start by creating an SVG element on the page. And I'm going to give it a, some style so that we can actually see it. So if I just do this, if we don't see anything, because the element is there, but it's white on a white background. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a border. And now we can see it. You can see it's created with some default dimensions here. If I open up developer tools, you can see that it's 302 by 152, which is just the default height and width that it's using, plus two on each for the border. So really, it's 300 by 150 pixels of usable canvas here. So I'm going to make that width 100% height. 500 pixels. And now we have a bigger SVG element. The reason that this size is important is basically this is our drawing canvas. The, when we create shapes, they will show up in here. To show you what I mean, I'm going to create a circle. R here specifies the radius. And fill is the color. So when I create this, you can see it's up in the upper left hand corner because I haven't given it any position, so it defaults to 0, 0. SVG uses screen coordinates, so 0, 0 is the upper left hand corner. And then as you increase the x dimension, you're going to the right. And as you increase the y dimension, you're going down. So this is a little bit different from if you remember Cartesian coordinates from high school. When you plotted a function, y would usually go up. So this is just flip that over the y axis same thing over the x axis no no change over the x axis to the right is always still increasing and i'll show you what i mean here by just giving this some x and y position give it a little bit more here i'll give it a uh, 50. so this has gone and moved this 50 pixels over to the right and 20 pixels down measured from the center of this circle and that's actually what the C here means. Circles are in SVG are always positioned from their center. I'm going to start creating some more shapes. So we have a circle. I'm going to create a rectangle. Rectangles have width and height. So I'll give it 90, 30. Let's make it green. And there we go. So it's covering the circle but that's OK right now. The coordinates that is positioned on, in the case of a rectangle, are the upper left-hand corner of the rectangle. So again, they default to 0, 0. But this time, there's nothing being clipped. If I go back to the circle here, you can see, let's, let's take this back, um, three quarters of the circle are actually not rendered here. They're invisible to us because they appear outside of this big white rectangle that is our SVG tag. So in this this case here, there's nothing behind here that we can't see. Everything is here. Uh, it just happens to be at 0, 0. For rectangle positioning, we're going to use x and y instead of cx and cy, because we're positioning from a corner and not from the center. This isn't something that we get to choose. We can't use CX and CY on a, a rectangle, and we can't use X and Y without the C on a circle. 
It's just a decision that's made for us by SVG. I want to make them overlap again now. So if I do this, the other thing I want to show you is that the drawing order here basically just depends on the order in this SVG tag. So if I go and move that to the beginning, you can see that this red circle is now overlapping. So the way that I like to think about this is that basically this SVG tag is a recipe giving the browser steps of what to draw. And it's reading that recipe top to bottom, just like you would a recipe. When it's drawing this circle, it's drawing it over top of whatever is already there. It's like laying another layer of paint on top of the canvas. Whatever's lower on here will always take priority in terms of what you can actually see on the screen. There's actually a way to override that, but I tend not to use it. Um, I think if you're creating SVGs programmatically like we are, you basically don't need to ever worry about that. It's, it's much cleaner just to kind of stick to this top to bottom ordering. Another basic shape we can use is just a line. I'm going to give it a stroke. I'm going to say x1 equals 50, y1 equals 80. Stroke and fill are the basic display attributes in SVG. Most shapes will allow both of them. Some shapes like a line don't really have an area, so fill doesn't make sense, but I can do stroke on a circle. So I'm going to make this blue. And it's a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to make it wider. So I'll do stroke width is three. Just like I can use stroke width there, I can use stroke width on a line. Make this one really thick. Another way to position and manipulate shapes in SVG is the transform attribute. So I'm going to transform this line. And this transform property takes sort of a mini language of transformations that you can apply. I'm going to use one called translate. And translate basically just shifts along the x and y axis. So I've moved it by 10 coordinates in both directions, but I can make it bigger. Another transform attribute that I can apply, do it down here, transform equals scale pi. Oh, I made a syntax error because I have a stray symbol. So this has gone and made this circle five times as big. Can do four, can do uh, decimal amounts. One thing to note is that it's scaling everything here. So it's scaling the radius, it's scaling the stroke, and it's also scaling the position. The scale basically scales from the origin point, zero, zero. And because this is transformed, that transform also is scaled. If I want to avoid that, I can put translate 50, 20 in here. And so I get the same thing. What happens here is that the order of these matters. So this is saying translate first, then scale. What I want to do is scale first, then translate. So that's scaling the point at the origin and then translating it over by 50, 20. Now I'm going to get rid of these to show you something else. One of the reasons the transform property is useful is that you can apply it to multiple elements at once. To do that, I'm going to show you the group tag. So the group tag is just the letter G, and you can put in it whatever you want including other groups. I can apply the transform property right on the group. The last thing I want to show you before we dive into some visualization is the developer tools. So in Chrome and Firefox, I can right click an element on the page and click inspect. That's going to take me to this view, which shows the same structure that I have over here, 
but now when I hover, I can see where on the page an element is. You can do fun things like change attributes over here and even delete elements from this list. So that's going to come in handy when we're debugging our visualizations.